morning, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. We believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship.
to get right into the word of the Lord and I'm going to just pour out to you what Holy Spirit gave to me and it's just such a I love the way God connects and confirms stuff yes, yes, yes. I, I was going over when Tim Joy ministered I was going over her message what she shared and then when Bishop came and talked about the understudy. And then Pastor came and talked about post-resurrection power. Yeah. Glory to God. I said post-resurrection power. Yeah. Saints, if it ain't no power, it ain't no church. Oh, yeah. uh, y'all too quiet. I said, if it ain't no, I know that it may not be good English, but right. just bear with me here. If it ain't no power, it ain't no church. Amen. Amen. That's the problem of the church. We need some power. And need to operate in that power. I believe if we operate in that power, we wouldn't have so many problems. Oh, it's, it's quiet on that one. It's quiet on that one, but that's all right. That's all right. But the Holy Spirit just confirmed to me that what I'm going to share, it just go along with what has been coming forth. You know, we just celebrated, we call it Resurrection Sunday, right? Yeah. Amen. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I want to talk about resurrection you. See, we all talk about and shout on the resurrection of Christ. But do you not know that when he got up, you did too? So you are not the same, or at least not supposed to be. When he died, so did we. When he was buried, so were you. And when he got up, you did too. Now look at somebody and tell them, act like it. Why are we still walking around acting like dead folks? 
Then we sing, forgive me, I know this, this may come against one of your religious songs, but that's all right, I'm going to throw it out there. Then we sing ignorant songs like, keep me near the cross. The cross was a one-time deal, and it wasn't about you. Jesus didn't stay at the cross. He went through the cross. And you are supposed to go through the cross. Now, don't pull out scriptures like where the Bible said, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Read the whole thing and not just that one scripture. And you'll find out really what Jesus was talking about when he talked about you take up your cross. He was talking, he was talking to his disciples and he was telling them about what he came to do. He said, this is what I came to do. This is my purpose. This is my calling. Now you take up your calling and follow me. Okay, we, okay. So I, I want to just, you know, try to do it as quickly as I can here. I want, I, 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 I entitled this, What Next? Where do I go from here? You'll be surprised of saved folk that don't know where do I go from here. And we are stuck in just being saved. And we got problems living the resurrected life. Because we think salvation is about missing hell and going to heaven. So everybody is going up yonder, waiting for glory, when we're supposed to be enjoying it now. You don't get eternal life when you die. You get eternal life when you accept Christ. You are as eternal as you ever going to be. Oh, y'all quiet. Come on now. I know this may mess up some of your religious thinking, but that's how I like doing that. Y'all probably know that by now. So here we go. So this message to, today is a message I consider a message of freedom. This is a message for those that have a past. Anybody in here got a past? Anybody? Yeah, a few of us, a couple of us. <laughs> I, I wish I could raise both of my legs, but I can't, you know. Yeah, we all got one. We all have done things that we regret. Anybody? Dumb stuff. You ever did some dumb stuff? No. Now, we know you did before you got saved. I'm talking about after the fact. Okay, we're just going to be honest here today, right? All right, all right. So, so, stuff that we wish had never happened, that we wish we never said, that we wish we never did, places we wish we had never gone, and as a result, we live in shame and disappointment. Come on, y'all. And seem to, no matter how we try, seem to never able to get over it. Come on, y'all. Because Satan knows that if he can keep you looking back, you can't go forward and look back at the same time. Come on, y'all. Is anybody in here? Shout if you witness what I'm saying. You talk back to me, I won't be long. Okay, so get this now. Let me say this. If we don't have a revelation of who we are in Christ, then the resurrection life the new life in Christ will be powerless for us. Now let me just say this real quickly. There is a difference in being raised from the dead and being resurrected. 
I know y'all thought it was the same. Because Webster told you it was the same, didn't he? Okay, he'd been wrong before. Get the, a person that has been raised from the dead will die again. But a resurrected person, look at Jesus. He said, though you were dead, death for you is over. You, now, 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 what we have to do, you got to stop thinking natural. And you got to think spiritual. Because that's what he's addressing. That's what he's dealing with. Watch this now. So, so. If we don't get a revelation of who we are in Christ, what happens, we live a saved life filled with condemnation and guilt. And Satan constantly brings up your past. And we're all trying to move into the future with a whole lot of yesterday. Now, one of the mistakes that we make, and, you know, I'm just got to, you know, giving you bits and pieces because, you know, I can't give you all this because time won't permit it. One of the mistakes that we make we identify ourselves not by who we are. We identify ourselves by what we do. So as a result, you allow what you do to define who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Which is one of the biggest mistakes that you could make. Because when you start looking at what you do, it's going to always discredit you in who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to hinder your faith from working, your walk with God, because no matter what you do, you're going to think that God is never satisfied. How, you, you all know, you, how Satan works. You can fast however many days. I guarantee you, when you get off your fast, the thought going to come to you, you didn't fast long enough. You make a decision that you're going to read through the Bible. And say, I'm going to read, I'm just doing five chapters a day. When you finish that fifth chapter, the devil's going to tell you, you didn't read enough. Because religion is never satisfied. You can never satisfy religion. That's why the danger for saved people is walking by sight. Get control of your emotions, will you please? When are we going to believe the Bible? I just, when are we going to believe the Bible? See, your behavior has nothing to do with your identity. Now, we're not talking, we're not saying you can live like you want and do whatever you want to know. The reason I said it is because if you are truly born again, you want to live right. Now, do you miss it? Yes. But truly born again people have the spirit of God in them. They want to do right. Same folk don't want to live like the devil. So if you see a person that want to live like the devil and love it, something is missing on the inside, not the outside. And you can wash that hog all you want to. He's going back to the mud until you get mud out of the inside. I'm getting rid of, now get this now, get this, get this. A newborn baby, you know when you're born again, that's what you are. Yeah, that's right. 
a newborn baby, right? Okay, a newborn baby, y'all ready? Has no past. Now y'all gonna get that next week. I said a newborn baby has no past. Now either you're new or you're not. I started to say, either you knew or you ain't, but I'm going to try to do it right for, a few, you know, let y'all know that I did get a little education. Hmm? A newborn baby has no past. Now turn to, turn to 2 Corinthians 5. You, real quick, 2 Corinthians 5. We're going to begin with verse 16. I want to show you before I read the main verse that y'all love, to quote, I'm just waiting for the day that we start living it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we quote a lot of stuff. When we gonna start believing it? And then act like it. And stop letting the devil and people beat you down as if they're perfect. Come on, y'all. Shout. You know, I know the more I talk, the, the harder it gets to shout, but try it. Just do it by faith, you know, just shout anyway. In the midst of the hurt, just shout. Now look at, look at this 16th verse, it says, Wherefore, brethren, know we no man after the flesh. Know we, brethren, so we already know that they're talking to saved folk, right? Because he said brethren, right? That means sisters too. So know we brethren, he says, know we, no man after what? The flesh. Now that is our problem. We still trying to relate to people the way they were before they got saved. And you keep thinking they're still the same. And that's why the apostle said, no, no man, no person after the flesh. Because although they may be acting crazy, they're not crazy because eventually that new man is going to catch up. Come on, y'all. See, one of the things we got to understand when it comes to this walk with God, this new life in Christ, there's three. There's the real you, your spirit, on the inside. That's the part that's born again. That's the part that's born again. The real you on the inside. That's the one that has eternal life in it. Then we got this, your soul, which consists of your mind, will, and emotion. Now the soul... This we call flesh. This is nothing without this and this. You take this out, everything goes. All you got is a shell. You think the shell is a lie. The shell is a lie because you in it. The spirit is connected to God. The soul should be connected to the spirit. Now I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit, now I'm talking about your recreated spirit. Do you not know when the scripture says that there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit? You think it's the Holy Spirit. The battle is between the flesh and your recreated spirit because your flesh is no match to the Holy Ghost. That whole chapter, that whole book of Romans is talking about you and your recreated spirit. How you supposed to act now that you're born again. But see, but see, now, the, the, the real you, your spirit is born again. That's where the life of God is. James says that we are to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. Well, if my soul is saved, what, what that mean? Right, right. 
The saving of the soul is a process. As you walk with God, as you feed on the word. See, when you get this right, this will be right. Because this is what controls this. Come on, somebody shout. So the reason we're having what we call flesh problems actually is because we got a soul problem. When Adam was created, the real Adam on the inside ran things. But when he, he sinned and fell, his spirit, the real him, spiritually died and your soul, his soul took over. And when his soul took over, his soul made his body act crazy. Because the connection to the body is the soul. So the spirit was in control. The soul was together. So the body acted right. But when Adam sinned and that sinful nature came in, the spirit died, the soul took over, and that's when you start acting crazy. So now, now, that's why the scripture commands us to renew our mind. Because when you renew your mind, that's the soul being saved. And the more you renew your mind, the more you get control over that crazy stuff. Come on, y'all. All right? That's why he said, no, no man after the flesh. You still relating to people that's born again the way they used to be instead of relating to them according to that new man in Christ. Now you can jump down to verse 17 because they're waiting for verse 17. I know. Okay, let's go, jump down to verse 17. Now watch what he said now. We're talking about where do I go from here? He says, wherefore, if any person, you know, man, that's mankind, you know, not, not gender. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, talking about mankind, not gender, he or she, what? Come on, y'all read that. Read it out loud. Start with the first word. Therefore. Now, whenever you see the word therefore, you got to go above it and find out what it's there for. Y'all got that? Now what? Therefore what? Read. If any man be in Christ, what? Stop right there. Notice what it did not say. It did not say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's going to be a new creature when he dies and go to heaven. It said, if any man be in Christ, he is. Is is what? Present tense, right? He is a new creature. Now, I'm going to ask a simple question. Who in here is in Christ? Raise your hand. If you are in Christ, let me see your hand. I'm looking. All right. Okay. If you are in Christ, according to the word of God, you are right now a new creature. Now, that new creature means a new creation. One translation says a new species of being, one that never existed before. I felt that. Excuse me. A new creature. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Are we going to go according to the word or are we going to go according to how we feel and what church tells us? See, we think church world as a whole. We think getting people delivered is preaching hell, brimstone, and what we call holiness. And we've been preaching holiness 
For umpteen years, there ain't nobody no more holier. So what's the problem? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things, come on y'all, read it. All things what? All things what? Are passed away. And behold, no, some of the stuff, a few things. The little sins. You know, they only little to us. Jesus had to die anyway for all of them. Your little bit, you know, well, you know, when folks say, oh, oh you know, I, you know I'm, I'm not bad, I'm good. That's all right. Jesus died for your goody goodiness. All things are what? Behold, all things are. But if you don't get a revelation of that, and you think that's somewhere in the future, and you don't see it as right now, it is not going to be a reality in your life. That's why you run to the altar every time to get prayer for the same stuff that you just got. Sit your donkey down. Let the folk that really need help sometime come to the altar instead of all the saints. Now, I'm not preaching against the altar. I'm not. The altar, anybody want to come can come. But y'all get the point, don't you? Okay, okay. He said, old things are, all things are. Whoa, okay, watch this. I'm going to just read some more. And all things are of God. Who hath reconciled us? See, you think you're not good enough. But the Bible said that he hath reconciled us. You, you know what reconcile means? It's like, it's like, give me, Brother Brenda. If, if you don't, get me, get, come here. Now, Brandon was going his own way, full of the devil. Well, she, she, but she is too, but I'm using her in a good one today. <laughs> he going his own way. Just for, so Jesus comes here and he, he's reconciling us now. So, so this is God. This is Brandon. <laughs> Jesus comes and gets Brandon in his messed up condition because God has given direction to the Jesus, brings him over here and introduces him back to the one he left. And he reconciles them. Now watch this. Brandon don't deserve to be reconciled, but Jesus didn't ask him. Good God. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Did y'all? He don't deserve it, but Jesus didn't ask him. Jesus did it anyway. While we were yet without sin, in due time, Christ died without your permission. All right, now he's, he's a new creature in Christ now. No, not, not this time. We just gonna be white on the inside for now. That's why James says, and we, religion had us, James says, work out your own salvation. Now, religion made us think it meant work for it. But he didn't say work for it. He said work it out. What did he mean? What God has done on the inside, get it on the outside. Where now it affects your body. It affects your actions. 
Come on, y'all. So he says, we have the ministry of reconciliation. Then he gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. That means that we're supposed to be reconciling or taking people to God just like Jesus did. But we spend our time doing crazy stuff, trying to clean the fish before you catch it. That's what the church do when they preach what they call holiness. And don't do this and don't do that. You trying to clean a fish before you catch it. Our job is to be fishers of men. The Holy Ghost's job is to straighten them out. But we always want to do God's part. We're trying to straighten folks out, and you messed up. That's why we got so many evil saved folk. Okay, come on, y'all. Huh? We got so many messed up saved folk. Just full of judgment. As if, I'm like, and who died and left you in charge? Hmm? When are we going to believe the Bible? Go to the next one. When, uh, he says now, he witnessed that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. You really want to get this because this is my point. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Now, that word imputing is like a, 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 a mathematical term to add. So he's not adding your sins to your new life. God Almighty. He's not holding you responsible anymore for your, in your new life. He's not holding you charged any longer in your new life. He's not imputing your transgressions. He has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You know what the word of reconciliation is? You are forgiven. That's right. That's right. You are forgiven. You may not feel like forgiving them, but you are forgiven. Watch this. Remember in Jesus' day when he walked, he taught, again, we misunderstood that, he taught the Jews under the law, forgive and you will be forgiven. That was the teaching under the law. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Under the new covenant, Paul says forgive because you are forgiven. He said, and that ministry I have given to you to go and tell them. And it is not your responsibility or job to decide who to forgive and who not to. Okay, watch this now. Come on. All right. Now, now go, move to the next one. Ooh. Now then, we are what? Now, Do y'all know what an ambassador is? An ambassador, what, what, say it again. An ambassador is a representative. You that are born again is a representative of the kingdom. Of God, not your kingdom. You are a representative for the kingdom. So that means heaven backs you up. That's why we got to be careful what we say to people. That's why by your words you're justified or by your words you're condemned. 
So you just can't, I don't care what position you got or who you are, how much money or what, you just can't say anything to me. Yeah. No, no, we ain't, uh-uh. No, no. You, uh-uh. You not just going to come up to me and just say anything, God, no, 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 we ain't going to bring God in this here. See, because we, we've, been, we've been given something. Now, real quick, go to the next one. I, uh, my t Lord have mercy. Go to the, oh, now this, this you ready for this one? We just, where did we go from here? We got to get this thing together. But we can't get ever, we can't get it together until we get you together. Us together. Come on, y'all. Read it, read it, help me read it. He who? God made Jesus to do what? Read. Who do, who which one knew no sin? Not you. Who knew no sin, come on. That we might be what? We've got to understand that once you get a revelation of your position, then you can produce fruits of righteousness. Until you understand who you are. You have been what? Come on, shout. don't get scared. Come on, shout it to me. You have been what? Made. You have been what? Made. You have been made the righteousness of God in yeah. him, in Christ Jesus. You make, that means that you will be no more righteous if you live to be 2,000 than you are right now. Because righteousness is a position that comes through Christ and not your works. We have been made. He didn't say you have to earn it or you have to work for it. He didn't even say work on it. He said you made it. Righteousness is not what I do. Righteousness is who I am. But until we find out and get that revelation of who we are, we're going to struggle with faith. That's why, that's why when we pray, the devil always tells us, well, you're not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. When you're praying and asking God for healing, what the devil said, you're not, you're not worthy of it. You got too many sin, too much sin in your life. Or you know what else he'll do? He will show you some preacher that you know that was big and famous and big everything, anointed, and they died. And then he will tell you if they died as strong and powerful as they are in God, what makes you think that God's going to heal you? Because now he's trying to make it about works because he knows that works will never get it. If you're going on works, you're going to die. Make sure you get it all together. Because if you're basing it on works, you're you, you going to be out of here real soon. Because it is not by works. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said, we just read it, he became sin, right? Now, now. Sin had to be paid, period. God did not overlook sin because Jesus was on the cross. The price, the penalty for sin had to be paid. Remember when Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all. Amen. Now that's what the King James say. The original says, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all judgment unto me. 
And if you read the verse ahead of, above it, and then all that, you'll see he's talking about the judgment of man because a price had to be paid for sin. God, Jesus dying on the cross did not make God overlook sin. Jesus dying on the cross was God or, and Jesus paying the price for sin. And he took upon himself your sins and mine, your judgment, your punishment, your penalty, and mine. That's why if you read Isaiah 53, very familiar. It says that he was smitten and afflicted. Talking about Jesus. He was smitten and afflicted by God because he chose to pay the price for you and your sins that could not go unpunished. They were punished, but they were punished in the body of Jesus Christ. So why are we going around still trying to pay a price that's got a zero balance? Who do you think you are? So we need to get that revelation of who we are so when the, when the accuser of the brethren come, and he's going to come. Yeah. You'll be able to say, I've got a right to divine health. Not because I'm good, but because Jesus got it for me. Yeah. And you'll be able to say, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed me from the curse from everything known and unknown that's in Deuteronomy 28. Oh, y'all. I'm going to say that again for my benefit. Christ redeemed me from the curse. The curse is everything that's in Deuteronomy 28. He said the sins that were mentioned and those that are not mentioned, he said Christ has redeemed you from it. Christ has redeemed me from it. So I got a right. Remember the last time we talked about the contract? And we talked about the Constitution? And we talked about how the American Constitution has changed? You know, the reason they put in there that you are three-fifths, because only a whole person got a right to claim what's in the Constitution. So that was their way of trying to hold you back. This is our Constitution. And you got a right to every... Robo Koshatabaha. You got a right to everything in this constitution. So stop letting the devil tell you what you can't have because he don't even know. So if you want to know what's rightfully yours, go to the wheel, y'all, and stop going to the people. All right, now there's... One more, I got to read this one. I got to read this one. Colossians 2, for those of you that may be taking notes, I'm going to go through this one. You know, I, I, I can't finish it all, so I'm just going to give you, you know. I'll give, I, this is enough to get us started, right? Okay. I want you to see Colossians 2. I want you to get a new look at you. I want you to start seeing yourself in the light of God's word and stop looking at yourself based on people. Look at Colossians 2. We're talking about what the word of God say. Colossians 2, uh, verse 10. I'm going to start at verse 10. Watch this. It says, and ye are complete yeah. 
Lord have mercy. We still trying to figure that one out. Because you think you're not going to be complete until you get to heaven. Well, the Bible said that he coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Well, you don't have the cleansing fluid and you don't have the iron. Jesus is the one that's going to present us without spot or wrinkle. Come on. And guess what? Read your Bible. When he comes back, you're going to still have some spots and some wrinkles. But he's going to take care of them. Okay, come on, y'all. He says, and ye are complete, which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of, of sin of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. See, you were buried in him. Thank you. You were buried in him. You were buried in him. That means when he died, you died. I said, when he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. You were buried with all of your craziness. All of your issues and your problems. When he was buried, you was buried. He wasn't buried because he was bad. He was buried because you was messed up. And he took your place. Yeah. It's just like if, if I'm getting ready to whip Heather, probably what she need. But anyway, I'm, I ain't going to deal with that. You're a good whipping. But, 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 uh, I'm getting ready to whip Heather, and Karina come up and say, that's the middle one, and Karina come up and said, Daddy, don't whip Heather. Take it out on me. Now, she ain't going to say it, but I'm saying, you know, if she, this is strictly example. <laughs> Talking about I got it mixed up. See, I told you she the one need to whip him. And she come and said, Daddy, get me. That doesn't mean that Heather ain't wrong. See, you focus on the fact that she's wrong instead of focusing on the one that came to take her place. We do the same thing with the prodigal son. We done made that whole thing about the son, but really it's about the father. So that's what Jesus did. The Father God said, sin's got to be dealt with. I can't let it go. I can't just overlook it. I can't even wash it away right now because a price got to be paid. And, and Jesus said, Father, make me a body. I'll go down. I'll take their place. Not only will I die for their sins, I will take their punishment and the judgment. You could never, ever, ever in the justice of God, you could never be punished for something or judged for something that Jesus paid the price for. Have y'all ever heard of double jeopardy? Yeah. Yeah. If God punished you, that's... Now, that doesn't mean that you wasn't wrong. That don't mean that you didn't act crazy. But it ain't about you. The focus is on the one that took my place. Now, you can look at me and see all kind of craziness. But thank God for the one that took my place. Come on, y'all. And I still do some dumb stuff. But thank God for the one that took my place. Come on. Come on. I still have some regrets and whatever, whatever, whatever. But thank God for the one that took my place. Jesus died for your past. He died for your present. And he died for your future. So you know what that means? 
That means, I'm just using, you don't mind if I use you as an example. That means that you got a right to a new heart. You got a right to a new, what, kidney, a liver, whatever, kidney. You got a right to, to whatever, and, and anybody else, whatever, you got a right to it. You got a right to it. Not because of your goodness, you got a right because somebody took your place. Robo Shataha. Somebody stood in your place. Okay, let me finish reading this. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. Uh, 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 go, uh, where were you now? At the 12th? Go, go to the third. Do you have the 13th? Go to the 13th. The, the, yeah. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your craziness, your flesh, <laughs> hath he what? That means he made a lie. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You, 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 the mess, any messed up ones? Come on. You, you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or made a lie together with him? So when Jesus got, no wonder, when you read the scripture, you remember when Jesus rose from the dead, some of the people that were dead got up too? That's right. That's how powerful it is. And some of them people have been dead for years and years and years, but they got up because the power of resurrection. And when he got up, so did you. Why we can't see ourselves like the Bible says? He says, you have he made alive. Having what? Lord have mercy. Having what? Forgiven. Forgiven who? You. Of some of them. Oh. Of the little ones. Oh. Of those that's not real bad. Oh. Has forgiven you all yeah. trespasses. Go to the next one. Forgiving you all. Lord have mercy. Y'all about to, y'all watch me because I'm about to run out of this building. I'm about to run. Good God Almighty. Okay, I was getting ready to run around, but the camera might not be able to follow me. When are we going to believe the Bible? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Yes. He brought it out. That means that Jesus is like when you got a warrant out for your arrest. Oh, Woo, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. It said he blotted out the handwriting of ordinance that was against you and was contrary to you and did what? No. No, he didn't do that. Now, you know what? Religious folk can't stand this here. If it's some in here, they just itchy. They itchy because, mm -mm, honey, especially them holiness ones. Them holiness ones really got a problem because they already think it's all about what they do and don't do. They done took the power out of Jesus' hand and got it in the Sit your donkey down. We talking about the word of God. What did it say? Blotting out the handwriting of, come on, that was against us. Took it out. 
did what? Did what? He took it out of your way. How did he do it? Why are you up there on the cross trying to pull the nails out? instead of accepting what he has done. We talking about the post-resurrection power. You want a miracle? You looking at one of the greatest miracles you'll ever see. Not because of me, So all of the stuff that was written against you, that's why we have something that the Old Testament will never experience. Their sins were only covered. That's why they had to have it done once every year because the blood of animals only covered their sins. But I ain't got mine. Y'all don't have to shout on it. That's all right. I shout for myself. The Bible tells me that mine was blotted out. The Bible tells me that mine was taken out of the way. The Bible tells me that mine was nailed to the cross. And I'm going to leave them there. See, we like to take because we just want some credit. We just want some credit. And we round here, we're not believing and accepting what the Bible says because we, we want to be accepted by people. We run around trying to please folk that don't even like us. I can go, I can, when I say I mean all of us, you know, I'm just, you know, I can go, I can go, I, when I, I can go before, according to this, according to this, I don't have to do a special nothing to get God's attention. Because cause of this, this here tells me I already got his attention. And I got his attention not because I'm good. I got his attention because Jesus gave it to me. So I don't have to be none of your favorites to get God. I don't have to be none of your whatevers. And it don't matter who don't get healed, I'm using this. As, it doesn't matter who don't get healed. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Because I have a personal relationship with God for myself. That's why when I go to him, I don't go on behalf of nothing and nobody but that person that did all of that. I'm like, I'm coming to you, Jesus, I'm coming to you, Father, because of what Jesus did. That's right. Now, I know I may not deserve it. I may not have a right to it. And I may not be good enough according to man. But according to your word, your word said, and I remind him of what his word say. He said, put me in remembrance. He said, plead your case. So I'm just saying what the words say. That's all. 
The word says by his stripes I'm healed. He didn't say by his stripes you healed if you're good, if you ain't done nothing wrong, if you fasted uh, long enough, if you sought the Lord and all. All those things are good. But you don't get God to move because of them things. You get God to move because of what that man did. Oh, Lord. Are y'all here? So as a result, as a result, what this produces in our life is resurrection power. And, 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 and you ready for this? And no more shame. I said, and no more shame. You can think whatever you want to good, well, please think. I'm not trying to please nor impress you no more. I found out something. So that's who I'm focusing on. We got to come back to the place that Jesus is the center of attraction. Amen. Amen. Well, give him some praise if you... Oh, my God, my God. Come on, give him some praise in here. By his stripes, you are healed. Jesus paid the price for you to have it. And anything else you need, he paid the price. He paid the price. So stop trying to pay on a debt that is a zero balance. Praise God. Amen. Thanks for joining. We are so honored to have you worship with us today. We hope and pray that you have been encouraged and inspired. If you like to sow a financial seed, we have provided four ways for you to conveniently give. Join us here every Sunday at 9 a.m. And in the words of Bishop McGee, don't worry about anything, but trust God for everything. See you next time.